Hey everyone, in this video we're going to dockerize our node application. In our previous video we got our first node application up and running, but in this one we're going to use the exact same project, but we're just going to create a docker file and we're going to run that docker file and we're going to be able to access it in our browser as if we were actually running it on our machine. Well, in this case, we will be running it on our machine, but it will be running within a Docker container. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a Docker file, and we're going to create that Docker file in the root of our directory, and it's going to just simply be the word Docker file with a capital D. So we're going to create a new file, Docker file, like so, and We'll add it, and you can see in my IDE it's got this little symbol indicating that it's a Docker file. Now the next thing is we're going to need to put some code in here. So this first line here is just saying um, where we're going to be getting our base image from. So this is going to be node 14. Uh, in the last video, you might remember I had Node 20 installed on my local machine here, so it was running with Node version 20. This is going to be 14. Again, this could be changed to 16 or 20 or whatever you want, but for this very basic application, there's not that many differences between 14 to 20, so it should work fine. This is going to be our working directory, so as the comment says, setting the working directory inside our container. So if you were to go inside the container, you would see this directory here. Users, source, and app. Then copying the package.json files into the working directory. So that's what this is doing here. And this is doing an install. Now what you could also have is if there was other npm commands that you had set up in your script, this is where you could put them in here. So you would have another line underneath this and it would say run npm whatever the whatever the the command may be. Then you're going to copy the rest of the application files into this directory here. That's what this is about. And then this exposes the port uh, for the application. So just one thing, this is 4000. So this will be the port that's running inside the docker container. So when we go to run the docker container on our machine, you'll see we supply two ports. The first port is going to be the port that's going to be running on our machine. So that's the one that we're going to request in the web browser. And the second one is going to be the one that runs inside the docker machine. So basically, we have to supply two ports. The first port is going to be for your local machine. The second port is going to be for the application inside the Docker file. And in this, if this is set to 4000, then that second port will always have to be 4000. And you'll see that in a minute if it doesn't make much sense. It's easier when you see it. And we start the application using node index.js. And we've seen that's what I done in, in my last video as well. You could you could switch this out um for something else like you know start like um npm start or something like that but this is what we're going with here. We're going with node and index.js. So once we have that there we're gonna want to save it and then the next thing we want to do is we need to build this image because there's no image there. If I do Docker PS you can see that I have this Postgres image here and this is an image of the Postgres database that I'm using. Um, I just use it, it doesn't got to do with this application here. So we need to go and build ours. So how do we go and do that? Well quite simply in the terminal if we just put in docker build and then we put in dash t and then this is going to be your image name. So I'm going to call this Ryan's app. So Ryan's app is now going to be the name of this application here in a Docker file. So the Docker file will be called Ryan's app and it will be our Node.js Express app. 
and then we put in a space and we just put in a dot because we want to build in the current directory so this directory that we're in here with this dot it will look for this particular docker file if i wasn't in the correct directory if i was a directory um, above this or if i was um, in like this node modules folder it wouldn't see a docker file and it wouldn't build it it would give an error so once we do that that built relatively quickly so what we're going to do now is we're going to just uh, run so i'm going to just copy a command here so this is the command we're going to use so this is what i was saying before with the two ports so the first one here is 4000 the second one is 4000 so if i was to hit enter with this I would go to my browser on my machine and I would type in 4000 and it would work. Uh, I'm going to do something different just to show you that it doesn't have to be 4000, it could be 2000. Um, and what this is doing now is it's running on port 2000 on my local machine but it's running on port 4000 inside the docker container because that's what it's got exposed here. So if I hit enter there, hopefully... oh. Sorry, I I have your image name here, but I, I need to actually put my my image. That was just a placeholder. So Ryan was it Ryan's app? I think that's what I called it. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So you can see the server it says the server is listening on port four thousand. But if I was to grab um open up a browser and grab port four thousand you wouldn't actually see it. So if I go here and I hit refresh, I can't see anything, right? So it says it's running on port 4000, but um, it's actually not because I've put we've put port 2000 there. So if I was to change this 4 to a 2, you can see, look at something else. So it's actually running on 2000. And this could be anything. You know, if I was to if I was to stop this, um, like if I I can't control C this and like stop it like I would normally if it was just running on my computer because it is running in a docker container so if I was to do docker ps you will see that 55 seconds ago we spun up this Ryan's app docker container this is the ID here so if I wanted to stop that docker container or stop that application I'd have to do something like this docker stop and then the name of it, uh, or the, the yeah the container ID. So that may take a couple of seconds. It shouldn't take much more than a few seconds. Uh, yeah, that should be it now. So if I go back to the browser, it shouldn't work. Yeah, it's down. And just to just to note, we could have something like this. So it has to be four thousand each time, but this could be. Let's say uh, running on port 8000. And then I could also, if I copy this and open up a new terminal, I could also run it on 9000. So now, again, I'll open up a new terminal and I'll do a Docker PS. And you can see that we've got one that's running on 8000, one that's running on 9000, but you see. They both, uh, they both map to 4000 and what this means is this means since it's running on 8000 and 9000 if I was to go back here again 2000 still doesn't work because we stopped it but if I was to put in 8000 here we can see it works and if I was to also put in 9000 that also works as well um, but anything else uh, would not work I hope you learned something from the video and I will see you in the next one